five, four, three, two, one. Fish. Welcome back to the final episode of this Waffle Otter project where we started in San Diego and we rode all the way up to Monterey. Two races, five days of bike packing. it's been a lot. Day one in BWR, we rode 127 miles. Then in LA, we did 112 miles. Then we got pretty far behind, so we had to do 150 miles up to Solvang. Then we did 92 miles, went through a beaver dam. Uh, I broke my bike it, doing 110 miles through slow. And then our final day, we got a surprise from Canyon. So now we've got a lot of miles in our legs. We have 651 miles in our legs and over 57 hours of riding in six days. Today, we're gonna look at two races, but first, Jeremiah's race. People are fresh. I have uh, close to 650 miles on my legs and 50 hours of racing or riding. And so this is gonna be interesting. It's gonna be the victor out here on the course today. Still in the back. I think I passed like four people. But that's, that's pretty good. I thought we might do this. Okay. This is a section in the World Cup races where you drink, you don't really get flustered. You just grab a sip of water, relax, and then it opens up. Go team, oh, Woo! I think all my passing is gonna be on lap two. Wow, beautiful. Well, definitely the first time I've started the Seattle Classic and it didn't hurt. Just a nice quick pace. Teamwork. And around 40th place after the first half of the lap. Now, Jeremiah had absolutely one of the best races of his life. I mean, dude, he crushed it. Now, he started with the elite group. He was one of the first off. And, I mean, look, he's a former World Cup mountain bike racer. He's a two-time national mountain bike champion. He's done some of the, the biggest races in the world. This is how he made a living for a long time. But this is the hardest race on the counter for mountain biking. It's part of the Lifetime Grand Prix, and he got 35th. He was only 30 minutes behind Keegan. So, like, th I mean, he is 35th best in America, right, on, like, to this day. Like, it was gnarly how good of a performance he did. However, this is Jeremiah we're talking about, and he's a bike racer. He's not a content creator. So this is the footage that I have to be able to tell his story. Um, I have about an hour and a half of this. So unfortunately, we're going to have to go on to uh, my race. Oh, wow. Now, again, I just wanted to really highlight how amazing Jeremiah did. Uh, he had been kind of seemingly off the whole week. Uh, usually the guy just drives me into the ground. And, you know, I'm just not sure. It, look, everyone has their on times, their off times. And for the most part, I've only ever known Jeremiah to be on an on time. Uh, and But he doesn't. He doesn't speak his emotions, right? Jeremiah doesn't, uh, he doesn't show emotion. He doesn't speak emotion. So it's really hard for me to know anything about what's going on with him. With me, you clearly know what's going on with me because I'm chit-chatting about it all the time. And so, you know, I mean, there could have been family issues, personal issues, whatever, his sickness going on this whole trip. And I would have never known. I just know that like he was somewhat off. And so for him to just show up on this race and crush it like that, but I don't know this yet. I have no idea how Jeremiah is doing because we started 15 minutes apart. And now I'm going to go off on a list of excuses that is very, very long, but nonetheless, they are true, okay? So one, am I a mountain biker? No, 
Uh, I have a mountain bike. I very rarely ride it. And this mountain bike had just been sitting in the garage for months. And uh, this project sort of came like last minute. It was like, can you get, you know, your bike to Sea Otter? And so my rear shock was blown. It has no chain. Um, and I haven't ridden this thing in forever. So I gave the bike to the Canyon Mechanics at BWR, kind of hoping like, hey, if you guys have any time, <laughs> you know, but like no one had any time to mess with it. So honestly, uh, waking up an hour before the race, I have no rear shock. I have no chain uh, and I have no fuel because my backpack got stolen. I had no kit. Uh, I had no registration. Like it would do it. It was. I almost was like, bro, there's no way I can do this. Like, literally, I do not have a bike to race. I don't have a number. I don't have a kit. You can see by the hamburger style on my computer, like, I had no nothing. But this is what this trip has honestly just been over and over and over, is that things just work out. And I kind of just accomplished one task at a time. Like, okay, I got to solve this problem. I need a chain. Orange Seal had a chain for me. Uh, cool. Then the, the Canyon mechanic, he was like, dude, your rear shock is completely smoked and there's no way to replace it. So he just jammed oil like, uh, or I'm sorry, water into the shock, jammed water into the shock. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute because <laughs> it was crazy, but bro, I'm feeling really good. I got to move up. Thank you. Why isn't it working? See that guy? Oh, it's it's because it's a it torques. Yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Oh, hey, dude. Man. We're good. Okay, man. You. Thank you, bro. High five. Thank you. Community to the rescue. Look, I'm Mr. Shit Show. Uh, we're good now. Let's catch up. We were doing so good. So my sh uh, shifter had fallen off like immediately within 30 seconds of riding. Uh, and so I, the whole first bit, I was having to hold my shifter together because I was so worried that the, uh, the screw was going to fall out. Then I would just be smoked. And so I, I, I held it together. I got to the top. Um, you know, I, dude, I had started way in the back because I didn't know how my legs were going to do. And then I was actually like, oh shoot, I'm actually feeling really good. Uh, so then I made my way up, but then had to fix that thing. So now I'm like trying to chase people down. And so let's talk about this rear shock, dude. The rear shock was blown, which meant it just was like completely floppy, loosey goosey, just smacking all over. So the candy mechanic jammed water in it to like slow down the rebound and, and spring rate, right? If, if you will. And so the feeling was very strange. It was like, worked out actually way better than you would think. Um, it had some kind of suspension because of that water, but uh, it would just slowly over time sink and sag. So I was like riding choppered out. So I couldn't really sit, but dude, it didn't, it didn't matter, man. Come on, thank you. Sorry. This is so fun. I'm having so much fun. Now, last year or two years ago, uh, I did a video on this where I raced every event in Sea Otter, and I came to this section coming up, and I ate absolute bananas. Uh, crashed really hard, and so I knew, knew it was coming up. Dude, literally the same front I crashed last year. Sorry, man. I knew that shit was coming up. That wasn't going to get me two years in a row. So we didn't crash, uh, but it was like crazy that two other guys are just down right there. Like that's why I don't understand why that section's not, f someone didn't fix it. <laughs> it's like, it's just been there. People just breaking bones there. Not me, not this time. 
So I'm trying to catch my way back up. And again, for having 650 miles on my legs, like I can't believe how well I'm doing. Also, uh, nothing, like I said, I had to borrow a race kit. I had no fuel. Like I had no bottle cages. Uh, and so I had to go to fluid last minute, like 10 minutes before the start and fill up my hydro pack, uh, with a bunch of stuff from fluid. So like, dude, I'm, I'm Mr. Shit show. That's just me. Right. But obviously everyone had a week to, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to get into excuses, but like the community came to my rescue. Like everyone was willing to help me as much as they possibly could given the circumstances. Now, because I did get that super sweet grizzle, I had actually contemplated riding that. And then I talked to everyone who had done this, the, sh the short version, because there's two laps and one lap. Everyone who did the one lap on Saturday or whatever, uh, they were like, dude, you need a downhill mountain bike. Do not run a gravel bike on this course. So I felt like a blown shock and, uh, uh, you know, the mountain bike situation would just be better. But again, like in this situation, the shock just slowly is just compressing. So it was like almost impossible to ride seated. So you kind of had to ride standing. But I don't really understand why everything was going as wrong as it could go. But I was having so much fun. Uh, so much fun. Now, there's no neutral feed which is so crazy that the amount of money you spend on sea otter and lifetime, like dude, thousands of dollars, like go into, you know, per, per, it's just insane, dude. And they have no neutral feed. I, I'm really bitter about lifetime and, and, and what they provide to the community. I, I think it's, it's kind of a joke, but either way, I have, uh, one of the better races that I've ever had with all the things that, didn't go right. Um, and so, dude, I'm all smiles, bro. All smiles. I honestly don't know how I feel so good. I feel really good. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, coming through. Sorry, sorry. Oh, shit. You. Wow. Okay. For a race that I was probably should not have started because of all the things that I had to do within like an hour before the race. Uh, 181st, uh, 19th of my age group. You know, I'm really proud of that. Yeah, I'm an hour down off of JB. Uh, dude, I'm so stoked. I rode the best race I could have possibly raced given all the circumstances. So I'm, I'm all smiles. I'm so stoked. Now, was there a little bit of drama between me and JB during this trip around navigation? Yes. Uh, there wasn't much story to be told, to be honest, during this. So my job is a storyteller, and I need to find that story. And the routing and navigation bickering was really the only story. This was supposed to be a full-on like hour-plus film, you know, just like all the other ones. But we just didn't have the ingredients to bake this pie. It happens. We've done eleven of these projects. It's bound to happen that just one of them's kind of a dud. Uh, not a lot happened during this. So I decided to make it into a seven episode little mini series, which dude takes my workload and puts it through the roof. Okay. But that's fine. That's my job. That's what I'm here to do. Uh, coming into this project, right? I brought a level of work ethic that was unmatchable. I was firing off of 100% brain synopsis. Cool. That I think caused a little bit of drama, a lot of bit of drama between Jeremiah and I, let me explain. Now, his part of this project is routing, navigation, and logistics. That is his 50%. So any money we make is 50%. So when I do all the content creation and the distribution, uh, that's his side of things, routing, navigation, and logistics. So if that's not matched, if I bring in a level of, of work for content creation and distribution that isn't matched on his side, frustration ensues. Okay. Now we've since worked all this out, but I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of, of background, I guess, because I eat bags of dicks a lot in these films. I often show myself in a really negative light. 
I don't think it's right to like hype myself up because I'm in control of the narrative. So it just sort of feels like self promotion and weird. I, I don't like it. Uh, I'd much rather show myself in a self deprecating manner and Jeremiah as the golden goose, because that just feels like the right thing to do. And so without going too much into all the things, there was a couple things that Jeremiah had said that really made me feel, um, I don't just not a, just bad, right? Uh, it was, wasn't great. And so we did have some drama going on in this trip. He is a phenomenal writer. I understand his frustrations towards me because I'm sort of just a nobody and nothing. Uh, and I seem to often get a lot of light, a lot of credit, a lot of hype. And he's like, well, dude, I'm the better writer. So why are you getting all the love? You know, I I'm doing the same thing as you, but I'm doing it better than you. So why don't, why don't I get the attention? That's how I see Jeremiah looking at this a lot. And so I often try to accommodate him by giving him as much of the platform as possible and really uplifting him whenever I possibly can, given that he doesn't put his GoPro in his back pocket for an hour and a half and then want me to make a cool video of him <laughs> writing. So enough of that. He did amazing. He was 30 minutes off of winning this race, which is like wildly crazy. And I owe him so much as a human because he's, he's evolved me into something completely different, unrecognizable. Now, this trip did a lot more for me uh, as a human than an athlete. And there's an old Chinese uh, proverb about a farmer. And it's like, maybe, right? Things are good. Things are bad. Eh, maybe you just sort of wait it out. I'm going to play that at the end of the video. It's really cool. But that's sort of what I took away from this. Things happen. It's up to you to put meaning on them. It's not like the universe is out to get you and, and that it wants to do bad things to you. Things happen. It just is what it is. And it's you that puts that into a frame of context and if it's good or it's bad, right? If I lose $100 on the ground and someone finds that $100 on the ground, right? A hundred dollars fell on the ground for one person. It sucks for one person. It's awesome. It's just one of those things that just stuff happens. And I really took a lot out of this trip in managing my emotions and just going along with the flow and just sort of vibing with whatever's given my way. I hope that came through. I've got a lot more coming up on the channel. Uh, daily vlog start. We've got Bolivia in January and I've got a lot of really cool projects coming up in 2024. I appreciate you so very much. I hope you enjoyed this mini series and let's get working on some new ones. As always, vegan cyclist. You on the right. Thank you. I love that kit. Come on, on your right. Good job. This dude's chasing me. He's chasing me. Dude, I don't understand. I mean, I'm probably mid-pack, but this is wild. Like I'm on the gas, dude. Ew. You could not have scripted a better way to finish that project. A three-way sprint to the line. Get out of town, dude. <laughs> we are on the hunt for not death, fuel, sugar. All right, checking in at the canyon tent after the sea otter classic, sea slaughter. We used to call it because it's really rough, really hard. And we just this, this course was way harder than last year. Yeah, it was way more technical, uh, way more. I mean, it's full mountain bike race. And it was way over 100K. They lied on the registration. Yeah, I saw 67 on, on the Garmin. I was like, isn't that when I'm supposed to be done? And I'm still climbing. Yeah, man. I, I just can't believe we both had good days. I mean, 660 miles, 60 hours. 
Well, it, right now it's, like it's 710 miles total. Okay, 710 miles and what, like 64 50, hours? Or 50,000 feet of climbing, literally. I don't even know. I didn't even know where we started. I feel like it was like a like an odyssey to get here. We had to ride the back of a whale and then we jumped in a, a giraffe. It was so much fun. I, this was one of my favorite projects. Absolutely. I mean, I was riding with such a smile. And because of the your your muscle groups that you use for the road bike, it's completely different. And so then my legs weren't stiff. Like they didn't hurt. I just had endurance all day. It was great. Honestly, I thought I was going to feel terrible like my muscle fibers like in my legs, I felt like I had like two good fibers left two days ago. Like just so exhausted, like the glutes. And the thought of racing was just outlandish. It was absurd. When we were rolling across the open plains yesterday, coming in, the sun's getting low and like you just, you're like, ah, we're finally here, we can stop. And then we got this freaking monster race. But man, I had so much fun. So just get out there and just ride. I, I, I'll add to that, because I thought about it today out there riding. Like, you don't need things to be perfect. My shock was blown. Uh, I had no bottle cages. You know, like I had no chain yeah. a, 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 an hour before the race. You know, like nothing was perfect. Suboptimal. Yeah. Everything was suboptimal about and, this. And I probably had more fun than if everything was perfect. Yes. Yes. So, awesome. Good. Thank you, man. Yeah. Once upon a time, there was a Chinese farmer who the process of nature is an integrated process of immense complexity and it is really impossible to tell whether anything that happens in it is good or bad because you never know what will be the consequences of a misfortune or you never know what will be the consequences of good fortune.